Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Passionate People and Preposterous Peeves. We're over halfway through season two! I am still your host, Ike, and before we get too far underway, I'd like to just say thanks for being here and helping this podcast grow and be appreciated. You know? Thanks. I appreciate that you chose to take the time and give me and my guest your ears. And if you still have time afterwards, you've enjoyed this episode, please share this with somebody that you think would enjoy it. Or just subscribe yourself if you already haven't. I mean a lot. So this week I am coming to you from my new apartment. Woo! I'm officially out of my awkwardly controlled uh, old place with my landlord who continued to gouge me for every penny, dollar, and cent he thought was reasonable, which I didn't, but whatever. I'm done with it. I'm out. Huzzah! Yay, now I can pay money to reasonable people and not get messed over, hopefully. Fingers are crossed. I'm now actually living with um, past guests Bruce and Doug. They have uh, they thought of me first, well, specifically Doug thought of me first when uh, the opportunity came up and uh, also old guest Steven Sidochi decided to move out. And so I actually have his old room and it's pretty darn nice, actually. Um, also live now above past guest Kyler and helped him actually uh, sort his magical cards the other day, which is kind of fun. Uh, and before moving too far past the moving in aspect, I have to give a big shout out to past guests Bradley and Dan Silver, who did moved basically mountains of biz in moments of time. is fantastic. They uh, Bradley came over at like noon one. We finally got the U-Haul took a tiny load over, was over at the new place, unloading like a smidgen of stuff at like two o'clock. And then Dan came in, whipped us into shape. And the two of them just, I was barely doing any work. It was fantastic. So when we left my current place at two, we did the rest of my stuff, which is should have done a video on how much stuff I had. This is fantastic. They did it in basically one load between the U-Haul and my car and we had everything, or you know, ninety nine percent of all my possessions in my new apartment before five thirty. It was truly impressive. I have, I've moved a time or two before back in my day, and it was it, this was something else. So thank you so very much, uh, Bradley and Dan Silver. You guys are the best, and I will buy you all the foods you want, mostly because you guys don't want any. So it's pretty easy to do. Speaking of foods, I uh, got some Girl Scout cookies, mm. and I'm kind of curious, even though there is only one right answer, what's y'all's favorite? Because I am, uh, I'm correct here, and Samoa's, they're just the best. If you think otherwise, please tell me your incorrect answer in, you know, whatever chat, if it's YouTube, or hit me up on um you know twitter at like ike or you know comment on the youtube comment on the soundcloud comment i don't know if you can comment on spotify either which way haul at me or just you know let me let me see if i can remember my email <laughs> email me at passion and peeves podcast at gmail and tell me why i'm an income poop for liking samoas even though they're uh categorically just the best thin mints are Thin mints are, I'm not going to say they're acceptable. Is that, that's uh, admitting defeat. I'm not going to do that, but they are quite great. <clears throat> As if you can tell, I've got still just a little bit of an itch in the throat. It's really taking its time going away. So hopefully by the time you guys hear the next recording or the recording after that, it will have diminished. Um, today I have a great friend and fellow educator, uh, Ryan Sloan on the podcast today. We had a great time talking and I hear tell that a lot of his students will be listening. So, uh, hello, Ryan students. Hope you enjoy this episode. And, yeah. So, uh, enjoy our conversation. Thanks. All right, folks. Tonight on the podcast, I have a man of magic, a teacher of teens, a dad of a doggo, a connoisseur of Korean barbecue, and a brother to two. It's Ryan Sloan! <laughs>
Hey, Isaac, thanks for having me on your show. I really appreciate it. Yeah, always, man. What you what's been going on? What's you know, been going on with nothing you? really. Uh, you know, long day of work. I, I got off. You know, I get off fairly early. I'm a I'm a high school teacher. Um, you know, I've actually been testing a little bit of magic, getting ready for this weekend. Um, but um, you know, it's a it's actually a pretty big coincidence that you asked me to be on your show. A coincidence, you say? A coincidence, and actually, some of my students said that this morning, and I told them that a friend of mine, you, asked me to be on your podcast while I'm actually teaching a podcast unit to my 10th grade English class right now. Wow. So yeah, That's it was wild. pretty wild, kind of like a fate, destiny, coincidence thing. Uh, I, you know, I thought it was pretty cool. That is fantastic. What did, what was taught about, uh, what, what can you teach me about you podcasting? Know, so right now, today's lesson, we went over the formats. So, you know, you can have the interview format, kind of like what we're doing now. Um, you can have the narration format where it's just a single person, you know, talking about, you know, whatever, whatever topic they're talking about. And then there's the group one, which is like a conversation where it's, um, you know, it's multiple people and they're kind of just chatting, but they're chatting about like a specific topic. So the one I was watching and showing my students today, it's called, I think it's called like unlucky teachers. And it was a group of four teachers and they're just <laughs> sharing silly stories that they've heard, you know, throughout their careers teaching. That's awesome. Well, not to break up that uh, hearty moment, but uh, do you have a favorite movie line that you like to quote for no particular reason Ooh, at all? Favorite movie line? Um, you know, it's probably going to have to be from an anime. Uh, I actually don't have it, I don't <clears> have <throat> it memorized. Uh, give me one second. Wow. A weeb that doesn't know his anime yeah. lines? Yeah. Sir, I, I'm going to have to report you to the uh, anime yeah. place. Well, let's say, I mean, I like the first line of Madara's speech where he says, wake up to reality. I just think that's a very good, uh, <laughs> you know, it's a good wake up for everyone. A lot of us are kind of lost in our own world. If you listen to the rest of the speech, not so relevant. But, you know, that, that first, <laughs> if you, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. That, the, first, the first line is a, is a good wake up call. You know, if I ever wrote a famous speech, I would definitely, uh, um, you know what, give homage to that and start it with wake up to reality. <laughs> it, it is definitely a yeah, pretty badass yeah. speech well the opposite of badass do you have a poor man luxury that you enjoy still to this day Oof. you know i you know i was that kid in college uh and then you know once i got my first paycheck i was kind of like hey i don't have to do this stuff anymore but i still <laughs> um stock my teacher's desk with uh plastic wear from chipotle so Chipotle napkins, <laughs> so Chipotle napkins, Chipotle forks. You should start next, uh, yeah, like the next uh, lesson you teach. This 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 next math module is sponsored by yeah, Chipotle. Yeah, so you know I don't have to go buy my own plastic wear if you know teachers. Your own yeah, underwear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not, you know. that, not that far, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Chipotle, Chipotle is great. Um, you know, uh, you know, proud sponsor of Ryan Ryan Teacher uh, Teachers Association. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> well, that kind of neatly leads into my next question. What's your favorite meal, but asterisk, not to go get, but to make for yourself, assuming cost and time are not relevant cost factors? Cost and time, not relevant factors, making it for myself. Yeah. You have you have an infinite, you have the, uh, for the, since we are, you know, <laughs> slight foreshadowing, I guess, or, yeah, foreshadowing? I should know what this word is. I went to film <laughs> school. Slight foreshadowing. Uh, we're going to be talking about anime at some point, perhaps, maybe even. Uh, you know, to if you have the, uh, what were those, in uh, what was it in DBZ? They have the, those like chambers oh, where like time chamber, and, and hours a yeah, year yeah, or whatever like chamber. that. A hyperbolic time chamber. You have a hyperbolic time chamber to like make your favorite meal and enjoy it. What you what know, are we making in there? I have never made it personally. If I had you know unlimited uh cooking skills in this chamber also, I would make <laughs> dim sum. I don't know if you're you know it's Chinese. Uh, it's like breakfast slash lunch food it's like dumplings buns mm. uh pot stickers things like that that's yeah, yeah. that's what i'm about, about so you're going in the in this time chamber you're going to not only take the the ingredients but also yeah a couple yeah learn how to do it really quickly also <laughs> in the hyperbolic time chamber yes i like that idea that's it's very yeah. big brain of you all right man i'm gonna throw you with okay. a hypothetical you're going out to a party and you want to look extra. You, you yeah, know, really yeah. pop. You want to get whoever's eye on yeah. you that you want. Other than your normal garb, what accessory do you add to your ensemble? 
dude, I wear Converse All Stars. Like my, I love my Converse All Stars. Like <laughs> I've been wearing them ever since I can remember. You know, like aside from a wedding or a funeral, I don't really care how formal the event is, other than maybe those two things. I will be wearing my Converse All Stars. So, yeah, love it. That's great. You know, you have permission. I'll, I'll put this at a time. If and when I die, please feel free to wear Converse All Stars. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> rock it up you you're more than you can you can go to the front and just like say as you're like you know speech like hey he said i could wear these stop giving me the yeah, evil eye yeah. grandma it's funny i was actually back. thinking about like why i like have this fascination and i don't know um if you've seen fast and furious the very first one where um uh yeah. i'm an american yeah so, where he yeah. you know it's like the very first scene he's in his skyline and you know he's like revving his engine and it like it zooms in on like the clutch and the gas and he's wearing converse all stars so i think you know that like two second image is like ingrained in my head that's yeah, how we know obviously. he's the hero he's wearing exactly. converse all stars I mean, he can't be the villain you know, come on. <laughs> yeah all right well speaking of you know r.i.p paul walker Who's someone you've never met, alive or dead, that you'd like to have lunch you know, with? Um, I would say my grandfather. Going a little deep with this one. Um, you know, I, Ooh, yeah, personal, so, you know, my grandfather it. passed away before I was born. Um, I hear, you know, tons of stories. Maybe my dad, he was in the U.S. military. He, um, he worked on the Saturn V rocket. He was an engineer. Um, he was born and raised in Kentucky, like, you know, deep woods. We're talking like they cut down their own trees, they build their own houses. And he was the only one to uh, go to college and kind of, uh, you know, get Aww. educated and, and um, yeah. you know, he played basketball for the Kentucky Wildcats. So, you know, I just, I really hear a lot about him. And I would really like to have met him. Yeah. That's so cool. I, I totally, uh, you know, empathize with that. My dad's father, actually both my grandparents, I don't mm-hmm. remember meeting. I got, a smidgen of time with my dad's father before he passed. And I never met my mother's biological father as he died when she was, and I'm sorry if I get this wrong, mom, I think 16, but never had a chance to meet either. So I I totally know what you mean. I'd love to. And also my dad's dad served in the military, um, you know, and just very much his Mm -hmm. own kind of person kind of has this, I don't know about your grandfather, but seeming as they're kind of, there's a lot of similarities there. They kind of a man apart, you know, very much built from a different material than, you know, I was just going to say, you know, in today's modern age, you know, we have kids on the internet, people on the internet, computers. Like when I hear what he did, like he built a house out of a tree he chopped down when he, you know, built, helped build a (laughs) rocket for NASA, you know, like all these things are like, he was buddies with Johnny (laughs) Appleseed. He shook JFK's hand. It's like, dude, these are like very manly, like just cool, like dope, (laughs) Yeah. Le- yeah, legendary there we go. Like, cool yeah, things yeah. to do as a person and then you know here i am uh you know watching japanese cartoons on my saturday so you know <laughs> yeah and, he, and he's looking <laughs> down and just with disapproval he's like really i did all of this and that's yeah. what you're gonna do no nah, yeah, he's looking yeah, down yeah, smiling he's happy for you where where would we take him we both live in the same for those of you that aren't aware we both live in the la basin where are you going where is he? Uh, where, where are you going to take him out? What what food does he need to have? Uh, his... You know, oh. I know the so so my my grandmother. So his uh, his wife is Turkish. He's American, and um, I know my grandma tried Asian or Chinese food for the first time. So on my mom's side, I am Chinese. So that's why all this you know Asian food stuff's coming up. So I would like to introduce him to that because you know growing up in Kentucky, uh, probably didn't have much yeah. access to that. So. No, definitely yeah. not back yeah. then. Yeah, now, now maybe, maybe yeah. then. No, that's awesome. All right, here's a hard hitting one. What's your favorite non exercise thing that you have to force yourself to do, but after are finished are glad and you know kind of, you know well, I did it. You proud even said non exercise on purpose because you knew that I, I would say that. <laughs> I knew everybody would Let's... say that. Nobody <laughs> likes exercise. I know. I know people that went to like. The reason uh, previous guest and friend of the podcast, Dan Milkman, went to college on a running, a cross country running scholarship. The guy still runs to this day. I go, do you enjoy it? He goes, no, it sucks. The guy runs like five ish miles a day. And he's like on mile five, on mile 10, you get the runner's high and it's only for a little bit. It's like, why do you do it then? He goes, I mean, I like the way I feel, but I don't like doing it. So it's just like, 
I mean, nobody, like, when you're talking to a lifelong yeah. athlete and the response is yeah. running sucks, it's like, okay, yeah, nobody <laughs> likes exercise. Yeah, okay, so while we were chatting about that, uh, laundry, dude. Laundry is the <clears throat> number one chore that I hate doing the most. And the reason why, and, and I guess all chores are cyclical, right? You you know, you clean your thing, you dust mm. your thing, it gets dusty again. But with clothes, it's like you wear them, they're dirty, put them in the thing you put them in the thing you put them in the washer you put them in the dryer you wear them again it's just like again it's this never-ending cycle um you know i'm not super like into like fashion you just put it you should put it you should put it on the like it's death taxes yeah it's just it's It's literally (laughs) never end and it's never going to end so it's like that impeding doom of like i know i'm gonna have to do this for the (laughs) next whatever 40 years 50 years of my life it's like cool i'm definitely looking forward to that Well, I never would have thought that would be one of those things that you have to force yourself to do. But as somebody who I used to have in unit laundry and now have moved to a place where I don't, I'm sure. Oh, I'm there's no excuses. The, the laundry machine's so. right next to my room. It's in my house. Like, there's no excuses. It's <laughs> all right. Well, it's the accent. Suck, it's the, so. it's the, yeah. <laughs> get, get over yourself, you toddler. Yeah. On the flip side of that, what inanimate object as opposed to the laundry machine, which it sounds like you're vehement enemies with, what animated object would you be best friends with? Oh, man, so I've been thinking about this one because I saw this question, and and I know my answer, and, and I'm about to say it, but I was thinking of how do I say this without A, coming off as creepy, B, coming off as weird. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, right, now yeah, you built it yeah. up. What's, okay, what's the so answer? my favorite inanimate object is it's my bed. Like, I love sleeping so much. Oh, no. That's that's not creepy at yeah. all. That's just like, wholesome. You know, as a teenager, like, you know, oh, like teenagers need their sleep. Like, I love sleeping as a teenager. And then college, and I'm like, huh, like I am 30 years old and I still love my bed. Like, like my, te- my you know, teenage students say, oh, like I slept a lot over the weekend. And then when I have to say, so did I, and I am 30 years old, a grown ass man, feel a little, uh, feel a little weird about that one. But yeah, man, my, my bed, like I love sleeping i love laying down in my bed and not even sleeping like resting just just existing on my bed one of my favorite things to do oh, yeah. it's, it's the best there's this there, there's a comedian that has this amazing bit about like sleep he's just like yeah it's just the best thing ever it's like people ever like come up with this like you know what's the best thing in life it's, yeah. like, it's just sleep and they're like no it's this he's like you're just yeah. wrong yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like yeah it, and it's kind of funny looking back it, it's really funny to look back and like talk especially as educators talking to kids yeah. of different age groups and to see and i feel like there's this weird bell curve of a sort with appreciation for sleep because when we're when you're really young like when you're sub i want to say when you're and maybe it's changed now but i feel like junior high and before Oh yeah, yeah. You want to stay up. You want to. You want to get exactly, as little yeah. as possible. Stay up. You know, rings in your eyes. Like, get as much right. hours out of the day. I think it becomes around like mid to late high school, college. It's like there's nothing yeah. better than this, and that goes for a while. I feel like until you're fifty or sixty, and then it's not the enemy. You're just like, eh, I'll just get enough of it when I die, and you just like fall asleep in recliners, wake up, and you just. Somewhere between don't need or don't get right. Any I, I feel like everybody I know that's like nearing retirement is just like right. Eh. I feel like at that <laughs> age though, it's acceptable to take a nap or to you know sleep during the day. Whereas you know I'm 30, like there's sure. no reason why I should be taking a nap. My brother today is like, dude, why are you sleeping? You got off work at three o'clock. <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah, I'm tired because <laughs> it's great. <laughs> yeah. Because I have the opportunity and yeah, it's exactly. the best. That's <laughs> like, why what I are you get talking? Off at three o'clock. That would be like questioning somebody why they're having a second milkshake. Because it's amazing. <laughs> what are you talking yeah. about? Why haven't exactly. you had exactly. to? Exactly. You fool. So to kind of uh, peel back the you know the facade, remove the veil. Do you remember your first first date movie? Um. Oh shit. It was at a drive-in theater. Oh, shit. Oh, you are no, no, I mean, no, uh, yes. no, 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 no. In San Luis, um, they had an old school drive-in theater. Oh, I have a really funny story about this, though. Okay. Oh, okay. You're yeah, not yeah, no. So so San Luis, the, the city I went to college <laughs> in, San Luis Obispo, um, they have like an old school drive-in theater. 
and okay check out this story so it was this girl i met whatever i like <laughs> had sushi with her whatever and then, and then we're going to a movie okay my friend who i met via playing magic and you know how that goes he drew what? a dick on the inside of my windshield like you know kind of like he sounds yeah like he like smudged friend. it in the dust and you know during the daytime you can't see that so then i go to the movie theater not knowing that he did this and you know you see where this is going and you know the the movie comes on whatever and i'm on this date with this girl and there's a giant dick on my windshield that we're trying to Hanging look through out. to watch the movie and i said you know my friend did that apologize uh i don't i think i saw her maybe one other time after that so <laughs> <laughs> some yeah. correlation i'll yeah, let you draw yeah. your own conclusions so oh, what, it was, was it was like maze runner or some Something, something that I, yeah, forgettable. Like, yeah, did not. Yeah, not <laughs> What's your a, in a moment such as that? As you were wanting to impress, said girl, this dick appears upon your windshield, and not, of course, not wanting to use foul language in front yeah. of a lady. What's your favorite non-traditional curse word to utter in such a circumstance? Uh, non-traditional curse word. Um, I, there's this new one I've been saying, and it's, so, you know, if something happens and you go, oh, bro, that's weird. Like, bro, stop doing that. You say bro, but you say the entire mm -hmm. word, you say brother. So like, you know, <laughs> something weird happens, brother, like what's going on? Like, like brother, brother why did you do that? And you know, I'm like not talking to my brother and you sound, you sound, and I hope that this doesn't come across as like, you know anything into words but you sound like you sound like a young preacher a young black preacher in the bible belt brother <laughs> well, why and are it's you funny doing i picked that up from my from my younger brother actually and and when he started saying it, i'm like dude why are you saying that that sounds stupid and he's like well it's it's just <laughs> when you say bro that's what it's short for, for short that's what it's short for and i'm like you're mm -hmm. right i never realized that and, and it is. I mean, you know, yeah. say bro, it's short for brother. So, yeah. you know, it's kind of a funny, funny that's, thing. That's saying, funny because you know? I, I find myself when dealing with students and they do something and I am wanting to, you know, maintain my, you know, sanctity of, you know, being mm -hmm. an educator instead of, instead of, you know, elongating the, the word, I contract even further. Instead of bro, I go, bro. <laughs> I just like, yeah. there's like basically two and a half letters to it as a way of showing exasperation. I'm like, I see you. Like, I see what you're doing. Like, you're not fooling me. The only person you're fooling is yourself in that yeah. you're fooling me. I see through this. Like you are not, I'm not like, Oh my God. Like you're, <laughs> I'm not like a child who you're playing peekaboo with. I'm not like gobsmacked at your like least sophisticated form of like dupery. That's not what's <laughs> happening here. I see it's, you. man, <laughs> like, dude. I mess it. with the kids lingo. Like, so, you know, I'm, I'm 30. I'm like, yes, I'm a millennial, but you know, I, I still like, I still get with like the, the Gen Z lingo. I, I still, I still, I still, you know, I'm not that old. <laughs> The fact that you said yeah, you can't with it, but it, makes so, it, it makes you sound yeah, like a phony. Yeah. So, so the thing I do is, <laughs> is so, so the two like common ones I hear all the time is, uh, you know, when they agree with something, they say bet, right? So they're like, hey, Mister, can I go to the bathroom? Yeah. I say, yeah, sure, take the pass. And they're like, I bet. And then right when they say I bet, I say how much, and and it just pauses nice. them I, and it stops oh them, and they're like, what? And I'm like, you said you wanted to bet how much, and they're like, what are you even <laughs> talking about? I'm like. Well, you are like proposing that we bet on something, so I am proposing an amount. I, I have ne I have never been. My heart has never been so warmed <laughs> in my life. You don't even know. So, for those of you that are unaware, I worked in. I have been working casinos. <laughs> this is as of. Hold on. How many months has it been since I haven't worked in a casino? It's February. The last time I was working in a casino was in November, okay. so like yeah. four months I've been out of the casino biz, and I am 35, and I got into the casino biz when I was wow. 19. Yeah, so in it a minute, yeah. to say the least, the bet in my mind is a contractual did, did obligation. Did you ever actually have that this. problem? It is, was, was that, did that ever come up when like someone said bet as like slang? Oh, okay, okay. No, that... That that okay. never was a thing because I mean, so much of I mean I guess outside of the what 
it's not an argument. It, it, it's not a... So in the gambling industry, it was never like a thing between as a dealer and to a player. That that, that was never oh. an interaction. But player to player, that would be a right, thing yeah, where, just, like, yeah. you know, basically yeah, they were calling yeah. each other out. It'd be like, oh, yeah, no, the, the Bucks are going to win this game. They're like, huh, bet? Like, and, it, and there was like, you know, there's a question mark right. tacked onto the end of it. So it isn't the same thing, but it's right. the same word. And to have that become yeah. slang for, a, like, you know, a, almost like a verbal right. nod of agreement is just so baffling to my mind that it just it infuriates me because it's so contrary to like my existence <laughs> for such yeah. a long period of time that hearing it still yeah. i'm just kind of like Ugh. but to have you to yeah. have you pull it off i, no, I might I'm be kind of the that, i'm so kind of the king of uh of like old teacher i guess dad jokes i guess it's considered dad joke yeah no, i'm not a dad old but, teacher yeah, punkery yeah, teacher yeah. i do yeah. the um the other one is like cap like a lie or like a like something's made up mm-hmm. and then like we have a rule where like you're mm-hmm. not allowed to wear hats in school so then i would say oh well like please take it yeah. off even if like they're not wearing a cap mm-hmm. cuz get it haha <laughs> funny yeah yeah mm-hmm. i'm pretty funny i'm pretty <laughs> funny like <laughs> <laughs> and that's what matters cuz you have to you have to live with yourself so you might as yes. well enjoy your own humor if you were a condiment, which do you think? Oh, I, I was also thinking about this one. I'm sorry. I, I don't like condiments. I, I literally don't like sauce, like external sauce on any food. I eat fries plain, burger plain, um, no extra steak sauce. Like, no, sorry. <laughs> All right. Yeah. One well, old fuddy duddy. Yeah. Okay. So, uh,. <laughs> Who would you want to play your basic ass in a movie of your life? Oh. Hmm. You can choose the time period of your life that is being showcased. So it it can be whichever, like, arc, yeah. you know, of you, your growing up story, your, you know, getting through college, becoming a teacher story, wh- whichever you yeah. want it to be. And you can choose the time frame of the actor who's portraying it. So you can go back in time if there was an actor... That at some point in your life look just exactly okay. So like you. they one hundred percent do not look like me, but on the inside they look like me, and that would be Jonah Hill, especially in in Superbad. Like when I watch that movie, and I'm like, dude, I, like that that's just me. Like I could have become famous if I just turned my you know high school life into a movie and you know made millions of dollars. Like why couldn't I have <laughs> done that? But you know, um, I like him a lot. He's really funny. You got drunk, put cold schlager in a yeah, not not. <laughs> quite that it's more like the being nerdy the being you know weird around girls weird little friend groups more about that not the not the partying and the, the drinking and stuff i didn't really I didn't do that <laughs> that's not what cool kids do am i right <laughs> yeah. children <laughs> well kind of tacked on to the end of that what life lesson do you wish you learned sooner as your Jonah Hill. Yeah, uh... and it's to to <laughs> do what you enjoy and not care what other people think. Because I went through, you know, my childhood, high school, I would say even a lot of college with that in my mind, always being self-conscious about what other people thought about me. Totally. And, you know, I know it's that's a you know pretty common thing people say, but, you know, once I got to adulthood, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to watch these Japanese cartoons because I like them. And that's what I'm gonna do. I don't care what my grandpa would look down. Exactly, and my think grandpa about while he's chopping down a tree, I'm building making. a rocket, you know, catching a whale, whatever mm-hmm. you know, manly thing he's doing. And I'm watching a cartoon at 30. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I'm watching a cartoon made with children very much. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So we'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> What's a job at some point in your life that you wanted to pursue but are very glad you didn't get? Yeah, so when I started college, Cal Poly requires you to declare a major. Very stupid idea, because what, you know, 17, 18-year-old knows what they want to do when they grow up. But, um, you know, my parents were dentists, so or they are dentists, so I kind of wanted to do that. I wanted to go medical school route, um, two years into college. <laughs> no bueno, not for me. Not good. How many credits did you burn accidentally following this? Well, no, I, I mean, I, I continued my, I finished my biology degree um, just because I was so far in. And I'm like, you know, oh, you know no. gonna, yeah, I mean, I, I did transition to like the teaching aspect. Um, mm. We had some like, uh, you know, like teach fifth graders, like science, like in the education department at Cal Poly. So I kind of started to veer on, on toward, towards that area. But mm. yeah, I mean, I took, you know, all the hard sciences, you know, uh, OCHEM, 
physics, like all, I took all that stuff, cell biology, like molecular biology. Like I took all that stuff. So, you know, what's the coolest fun fact you remember from biology? Coolest fun fact. Oh, you're, you're sitting around at a bar. You need to, you need a fun oh, fact boy. to impress a new friend, uh, somebody that catches your eye. What, what's something you're going to, you know, pull out of the old biology app? Uh, let's see. Um, I mean, other than the mitochondria being the powerhouse of the cell, um, I would say the it's called the white t-shirt experiment. Have you heard of that? I have not. Tell okay. me more. It sounds like something that's going to happen at Mardi Gras this summer with me. Yeah, and you know, it's so it's a uh, I'm not sure if it's like confirmed or, or what, but they're talking about human pheromones and like being attracted to a mate. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, I think the the class was like animal reproduction or something like that. So some <laughs> yeah, scientists it was. Yeah, right. Wink. Yeah. So, you know, some scientists wanted to see if this worked with humans, to see if, like, humans produce pheromones that certain people are attracted to. So it was called the white t-shirt experiment, where in the class of the, of the lecture that it was happening, they gave a white t-shirt to every male. They were instructed to wear it, wear it to the gym. So, you know, it gets nice, all, nice and sweaty. And then that they would, must. yeah, they would put it in a Ziploc bag, you know, they would label it with the person. And then <laughs> this is like pretty gross. They would give it to the females <laughs> in the room. And they would smell said shirt and <laughs> give see it a whiff, if, ladies. Yeah, and see if they were attracted to the <laughs> pheromones on the white T-shirt. And, and after all of them threw up. Yeah, and you know, uh, I, I know some like professors did this as like a homage to the to the original study. I don't even mm. know if I'm saying that word right. Um, homage. Homage. There we go. Um, and uh, you know, they they kept everything anonymous because you know they're not trying to play you know dating you know, the yeah, matchmaker in, yeah, in evolutionary be... biology, but, um, but it's yeah, you know, it's just an interesting one. one. It's an interesting one. Um, but yeah, that's... Did, what was the result? Was there any like, yeah, I, I fighting think, there? no, I think it was pretty inconclusive. That's why I'm saying, you know, I don't know like how, <laughs> you know, how it turns out we don't have pheromones. Who knew? Yeah. And you know, what, I think, what was the one you, you kind of said as a throwaway line, you said mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Oh yeah, um, yeah. I guess I kind of just take that as common knowledge because you know, as a as a biology major, that was like the ongoing joke. Um, I don't actually know where this joke came from. Like, I see it all over the internet, but it's um, what I perceive the joke to be is that's like the most basic thing that they always teach you in every biology class. That's like the number mm-hmm. one thing. You know, the mitochondria. It's a part in in a cell, and it creates energy. And it kind of just became this like ongoing joke. And I mean, it was like all over the internet. It was like memes. It was whatever. Like I remember this, this kid at graduation had it on his graduation cap on his, you know, little square cap thingy. Um, but yeah, it's just the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. Like it seems like a, like a, one of those like random tidbits of information that's like never actually going to be useful. I think that's more what was, it was getting at. It's like, oh, okay. That's a cool fact, but. So it's know. just a, okay, yeah. It, yeah, it is just a boilerplate. Like, okay. Yeah. I thought there was like a little bit more to that. No, nope, no. It's just... <laughs> no, it's just, it's, it's literally the powerhouse of the cell. That's like, that's literally what it is. That's it. Cool. Cool story, bro. <laughs> yeah. You're... I'm just imagining me in like class writing that down. Okay, and, and then he just moves on to the next yeah. thing. Oh, wait, what did I miss? Yeah, no, no, no. You got it. the whole entire note. Like, that's. <laughs> the note. That's no, no, not even is. notes. Just the note. Yeah, yeah. note. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing more on that. Yeah. And we're done. Just click and then move. <laughs> yep. What media, whether it be book, graphic novel, TV show, or movie, have you been putting off that is next on your to consume list that you just can't wait to break open? Oh, uh, it's, it's the graphic novel because I watch so much anime and then the, the way it works is usually they come out, the, the, the graphic novel comes out first and then the animation studios will animate just a section of it. And that's what you see on TV or whatever, on Crunchyroll, yeah. on Netflix, whatever. And it's, you know, it'll be like one or two seasons and, you know, the shows are so freaking good that it's like, I can't wait a year for this to come out. So then I go totally. read the graphic novel. Um, so uh, I have a bookshelf of about, what is that? Maybe 40, 50 graphic novels up there that I have not read. But, um, you know. That's what's they're... happening this summer, boys. Yeah, you know, they're, they're waiting there. I'll, I'll slowly peck at them. But, um, yeah. Any, any, like, big titles or, uh, you know, particular IPs that you're really looking forward to? Yeah, so um, I, this is 
little off the off the track. I'm really into like the romantic comedy genre of anime oh. and manga. So there's one called Comey Can't Communicate. It's a girl with social. <laughs> Dude, no, no. Okay. Oh, and... I just, oh, yeah. I, I just love. No, that's the title. Yeah. A- a- anime titles are oh, so yeah. succinct. They're like they 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 are the front and back cover of like a book or like a yeah. movie they the sale the salesmanship is the title it's yes. so great there's yes. no like well what's this about it's like no you read the title <laughs> the funny thing is is when i said that and you kind of reacted like that i was like wait why is he reacting like that because i have i almost think like that type of title is normal now so i'm like Damn, yeah. that's not even a weird title but yes it is a very weird title um so no, it's just my it's my favorite thing about anime. Oh it's yeah, like no, it's, it's the, hilarious. The it's epitome hilarious. of it to me is yeah. the time I was reincarnated as a slime. Yeah, it's oh like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a paragraph of a yeah, title. Exactly. Like, yeah. Jesus yeah, it's really funny. Um, no, so that one's about a girl with social anxiety enough to the point where she cannot talk at school, um, and she meets friends and she learns how to communicate other ways, and it's really, really cute, really wholesome. Um, that's a really good one. Um, I. I read another one called um, it's called Love is War, but the the Japanese name is Kaguya-sama, yeah, and it's heard that one yeah, and it's uh, like you know I try to describe these shows to people, and I'm like you know it's it's the same as like a sitcom, right? Like if you think it's about set in high school, yeah, it's <laughs> or like it's like what is the the show The Office? Like what is that about? It's like yeah. it's dude, they just go to work and just random stuff happens, and that's literally <laughs> what a lot of these shows are. Um, Except instead of work, it's yeah, it's it's high school, or you know there are some that are like in the workplace, right. but but it's, random, random aside, I love how every single anime is set in high school. Yeah, yeah, no, right. it's <laughs> like, like it's like every person in Japan is is still in high school. Like that's yeah. just, you know. <laughs> it's the well, I mean, it makes sense, but it's the most important time and part of your life yeah. in Japanese culture because so much happens with yeah. your grades from there. Just like trend, like just they make they literally are. <laughs> High school in Japan is the way American dads in the like the nineties talk to their kids about high school in America. <laughs> it's gonna make your life it's the most important thing. Yeah, and like, all right, yeah. dad, you're just wrong. Yeah. But in Japan they were just correct. They, they were, were literally like, correct. They yeah. were in the wrong <laughs> they were in the right timeline in the wrong part of the world. If they right. had just been in Japan, they would have nailed it. They would have like nailed that's it. all they needed yeah. to be. All right, lastly before we throw it to commercial break, mm-hmm. if you could have the listeners of this podcast hear one song of your choosing, which would it be? Yeah, so it is actually again we're going with this whole anime theme. It's uh it's one of the theme songs to one of my favorite. It's um it, it's it's in Japanese. So I I no. don't know how to read the the um the Japanese characters, but I looked in the translator. What kind of weeb are you? I know, not a very good one. <laughs> and so the band is called Goose House, the album is called Milk, and it is called the English translation is called If It Shines. Um, we'll say it's the opening theme song to the anime Your Lion April, which is one of my favorite. Um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend that song. It's really good. I recommend to look at it on watch it on YouTube because you'll see the anime intro and the artwork is is really amazing. Awesome. Yeah. All right. With that, we're gonna throw it to our first break. Feel free to stick around and enjoy this totally real commercial, or take a minute to enjoy If It Shines by Goose House. Or if you really wanted to hear a song from a previous episode, check out the playlist on Spotify. Passionate People, Preposterous Peeps podcast, Song Rex. It's a long title, I know. Don't worry, there's a link in the description. Either way, see you in a jiffy. This podcast is sponsored by Rush Puppets. One of the easiest things you can do with your hands and a light source in a dark room. Over human history, millions of people have used Rush Puppets to great enjoyment. With limitless possibility and no upfront costs, We'll have your hands busy forever. Or until the power comes back on. So what are you waiting for? The power to go out? Oh yeah, right. Okay. Well, but when it does, we'll see you and your on the wall. Welcome back, everybody. So I'm here with Ryan. Uh, Ryan, what's the passion that you brought with you today? So the passion I've brought with me today, and we've kind of, uh, you know, given a little hints throughout the throughout the first segment. We but, have, yeah, we have, and it's going to be this, you know, this Japanese cartoon thing that's uh, getting pretty popular. You know, it's called anime. The uh, <gasps> graphic novel version is manga, and um, you know, if you haven't heard about it, you know, you can Google it, figure it out. It's it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's really popular right now. Yeah, really popping off. Yeah, it kind of is. So to kind of wind back time, when did you first? 
get introduced to uh, anime? Yeah, so, you know, as a kid, uh, you know, you, you're you sick during the week and you stay home. You get to watch TV all day, right? So, you know, there was a show or like a segment on, oh boy, Cartoon Network called Toonami. Uh, you're half right. Yeah? There was a segment on Cartoon Network called Adult Swim. That had Toonami? Which I believe to, had Toonami. Okay, so I'm like one level segment not far enough. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna google this <laughs> yeah no it's yeah something yeah i know it's I, I definitely remember it was cartoon network channel 71 i just remember that um and you know i had that little alien guy i think his name was like tom or tim and he yeah, yeah come out in his little ship and he's like next episode of dragon ball z right yeah yeah um but anyway they'd always have it with the most egregious i mean back then and still depending upon which company you go with they'd also have the most egregious dubbing ever yeah yes yeah, so, you know it was all in english um, you know, Dragon Ball Z was probably the main one. That's probably my first, first uh, one I've seen. You know, just you as a kid. You every American. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I'm not even following the story. I'm just watching cool, <laughs> yeah. cool shit. Next week on up. DBZ, Kamehameha. Right. Exactly, Maya. exactly. Next week on DBZ, Maya, Maya. Yeah. yeah, and um, so it was definitely that one. It was like the Gundam Wing series. Oh, um, yeah. And then, and then when I like finally like figured out one that I really liked, it was called Roroni Kenshin, and it was set in um, like feudal, feudal Japan, Japan. Yeah. and um, it was about a samurai, and he was trying to you know, like move on from his life of you know being a being. Um, a, um... Actually, I believe it was about a Ronin. <sighs> okay, all right, all right. <laughs> All right, all right. I am weep the weep. <laughs> so, uh, uh, what what age is this? We we're we're yeah. tyke we're tyke age. What? Uh... Uh, I would say middle school, maybe uh-huh. like first year of high school. I would say. And so we're like fourteen, fifteen. Yeah. Right. And I remember, you know, I watched it all on TV. Uh, you know, my mom took me to Barnes and Nobles. I bought the manga that I actually have still sitting on my shelf right now. Awesome. And it's okay. So I actually have a. a a funny uh story about this because at the same time that this was airing naruto was airing and yeah, was. you know in case you guys you know haven't heard but like i think hands down naruto is the most popular anime ever maybe second most popular. um yeah i think it might be second to yeah. db dbz and it like depending upon yeah. the time frame you're looking at like when it first started off dbz like naruto didn't really exist dbz was right. then naruto came along i think it usurped and then yeah I hope, although I don't know, when Shippuden kind of took off, I hope DBZ reclaimed it because I think Shippuden sucks. Ooh, I'm watching Shippuden right now for a second time. Uh, so we'll have this discussion later. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, one of the more popular, you know, you know, extremely popular, popular like franchises, right? Like you see mm-hmm. Naruto merchandise like in, in stores. Like it's it's like everywhere. It's on T-shirts. Yeah. It's on T-shirts at Target. Um, but it's funny because that was airing at the same time as Roni Kenshin. And I refused to watch Naruto. <laughs> and I had a very uh, good reason for this, and it was because I thought in a fight because losers watched Naruto. Well, no, I thought samurais could Kenshin. beat ninjas in a fight. I, I was like, dude, a ninja just like sneaks around, like like samurai could you know wreck a ninja in a fight. So I'm like, why would I watch this stupid show about ninjas when I could watch this cool one about samurais? So Fact. Uh, I I went with Roni Kenshin, like refused to watch Naruto for the longest time, deeply regret it. Could talk about that later, but. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that was kind of like my first like favorite show as a, as a kid. Why did you deeply regret it? I'm, I, this is a nerd change that we're getting on. I sorry, I apologize, folks. We'll we'll get back to the main topic, which is also nerd. But whatever. Why why did you deeply regret it? Because I watched Naruto uh, original and ship it in. I watched you know the all I don't know what seven hundred episodes within maybe like a six month time frame, maybe like one or two years ago with my brother. Mm-hmm. You know, I just I just put it off forever. I was like, you know, samurais are cooler than ninjas. Why would I ever watch this? And then my brother, who'd always already watched it, he's like, hey, let's let's watch it. And I'm like, dude, 700 episodes. How are we going to watch it? He's like, well, just, you know, take it, quote unquote, slow. Um, <laughs> and it it Three is. Three days later. Yeah. And I, and I know this is like very basic because it's it is a very popular one, but it is my favorite show. It is. Wow. It, yeah, it, it is. There are so many like adult lessons, adult themes, adult, uh, I'm not even adult, just like, like useful, uh, like pieces of knowledge within that show um, that I, I literally told my friends, I think you are like missing out if you have not seen the show. Like it is, 
I am, I am that into it. So. Yeah. All right. Well, now we got to ask, yeah. who's your favorite character and why is it Gara? Okay, so it was Gara for a while. It, it was it was Gara for a while. Um, it it was him for a very long time. Uh, like no, like I'm not like it, it was. Uh, and then you made a mistake and chose. Oh, it's Itachi. It's it's obviously Itachi. Like, uh, Ugh, I God. I like so you know I asked you can I hey can I come 15 what? minutes later onto the podcast? What? Do you want to you know like what I was straight doing? Straight edge. Like why is it Itachi? Do you want to know what I was doing? I was watching the Sasuke Itachi fight with my brother with a friend oh, who's never Lord. seen Naruto, and we had to finish that episode. That's why I was late to the podcast. Um, no, I, yeah, I, I right. really like, no, I, I, I you say, if you said Sasuke, we would oh, just no, end no, the podcast no, right no. there. Yeah, I would, I would just leave. I would just quit. Yeah, I would just, <laughs> um, uh, no, I, so I, I really like the brother, yeah, the I brother mean, Itachi, thing. He's the, he's the Snape. He's the Severus Snape of Naruto. <sighs> okay. I don't, sorry. I don't know Harry Potter. I, I like literally don't know. Like I never write Snape is Harry Potter. <laughs> yes. You, you are, you are the right. Yeah, yeah, I, I honestly right like I I know zero about Harry Potter, so I cannot make the connection. Um, I mean, there's a there's a lot of characters that are like I'm trying to think of like another character that's like that. It, it it's a classic trope. I think it's as a tale as old as time, and I think it is a good one. Yeah, but I I mean I I think you like <laughs> I think you like Itachi for the same reason I kind of like Gara, so I totally get it. Yeah, uh, and and that's why I like Gara at the beginning too. Is I, I you know I really like the villain backstories. You know, kind of tells why people become the way they are. You know, Gara and Naruto were very similar, and then Naruto grew up with friends. Gara did not, and you know, I, I mean, I can't see that happen in real life. You know, so a, a kid grows up, you know, without a family, without parents, whatever, yeah. and then you know, vice versa. So, yeah, definitely one of my so favorite shows. You get introduced to anime fourteen fifteen. Yeah. You finally make the step to watching Naruto. Two years ago, <laughs> like I'm oh like, wow, yeah, no, dude, I'm like 27, like 27, 28 years old, yeah. Oh literally. wow, literally, yep. All right, well, you know, like, better late than never. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 honestly that's literally why I said I was like, dude, I wish I watched this as a kid and then yep. rewatched it again, like now. But um, you know, this is definitely one of those things that I notice when in playing uh, again. Sorry, folks, D D. <laughs> I'm gonna derail for a second. When playing magic, when reading things, when watching shows, the minute now as an adult, I realize that I'm like resisting and there's not like a strong logical one. There's an emotional baggage thing of like, I'm not going to play that. That deck is for like losers with no skill. I'm not going to watch that. That's for like, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, that that deck requires no finesse. It doesn't blah, blah, blah. That show doesn't have any blah, blah, blah. The second you do that without watching yeah. any amount, without trying that deck, without doing that activity, without talking to that person, you are almost always making a mistake. Yeah, and and I think that, honestly, like the way to get around that is you just have to mature and you just have to age because it is so hard. Like I look or just back, try everything. Yeah, yeah, you can just try everything. Yeah, I, I just you know that is like a mindset like you have growing up and oh, and sure. you know as an educator, I'm sure the same thing with you. Like I tell my students, like, dude just try this thing like yeah. just you know ju- like, like whatever just study 15 minutes like and, anything whatever it is and here, here's here's the best secret folks when you try it and you were right you can be like i knew it yeah and then you can go on yeah. this parade yeah, exactly. of this sucks and i tried it yeah. and you can be so firm in your foundation of this is stupid come at me i've yeah. got all the evidence i need yeah. oh yeah when you a- get you get to do you get all the things yeah always try it because you get everything yeah you have all the ammo for every fight it's a it's a win-win because if it is still dumb you can say oh well this is dumb and i tried it it is dumb because of this this and this yeah if it's not dumb you now just found this thing that's not dumb anymore exactly yeah totally recommend okay so before the podcast we had we kind of talked and you said there was this interesting story because and this kind of ties back into what you talked about earlier where you know don't let Basically, don't let the haters keep you down. Yeah. You know, don't let the perception of society stop you from enjoying what you're going to enjoy. Yeah. Don't let them yuck your yum, if you will. Yeah. So it sounds like there's almost like a hiatus or like a, you know, a kind exactly. of like inverted bell curve to your anime viewing. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I was into that as a kid, maybe first year of high school. I, you know, I never got bullied as a kid in, in high school, but I do remember at the time, and I am so jealous of everyone now, because anime is actually cool now, but, you know, anime was not cool. It was, it was not cool. It was, uh, you know, like, wizards, nerd stuff. It was, it was, like, not cool to like all this stuff. 
and I did like all Can't this confirm. stuff. Yeah, I, <laughs> you know, played Warcraft, I played Starcraft, I played, you know, what, all, all this stuff. And those things were not cool. And, you know, I had this self-conscious teenage slash young adult mind of, you know, I need to be cool. I'm going off to college now. Yep. I'm going to do, quote unquote, cool college things. I'm going to leave all my, you know, Japanese anime stuff at home. And, yeah, I, I did. I, I really stopped for a while. Um, and, and and I do really regret that, actually. Um, and then I picked it back up. I would say it was after I graduated from college, which was, what, 2016. One or two years later, I moved in with a roommate, and he was really into it. And he kind of got me back onto anime. He would show me some new shows. Um, he introduced me to a couple new genres that you know I'd never seen before. And um, and yeah, it's 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 been like that ever ever since then. So that's how many years? Maybe the last five, six years, I would say. Maybe yeah, something like that. So six year golf. Yeah. So you just picked. Sorry. My brain just malfunctioned. You just picked up how recently? How many years ago? Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Timeline. Okay. Pre-high school. Stopped yep. in high school. I stopped from high school all the way to college and two years after college. This would have been 2018. I started back, let's just say 2018, 2019, and then up until now. Okay, so you've been going strong for four years. Yes. How quickly did you stop from – you got into it, your foot's in the water, and – is it within like you basically have a year of enjoying it before you're like, no, well, I've got I mean, adult it was, up now? Or? No, no, it was. I, I watched it as a kid, and, and there was a longer time than than that where you know I did watch it. I just I just like remember consciously like stopping in high school because I'm like, oh, this is not cool. I'm gonna stop. Yeah, but it, like it, it was only like two or three years. Like you got yeah, your feet got wet. Yeah, and then uh oh, got it, got to be cool. Right. Yep. Ditch it. You ditch it for like five more than five, like ten. Yeah, years. yeah, like yeah, yeah. And you ditch it for like. From like sixteen to twenty, what like twenty four, twenty yeah, yeah, like seventy years. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And then you pick it back up with just this unbridled fervor. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, and it was like it's not, it's not awesome, but that that's so cool that you came back to it and you're like, you know what? Fuck. Yeah. That's so great. Yeah, and and it, it was. One of the things was discovering the, the other genres, right? Because when you're a kid, you watch, like, the action. They're called Shonen, whatever. You know, stuff blowing up, like, super, like, Dragon Ball Z, right? That's Samurai. stuff so cool. You should watch it. Samurai, ninjas. Like, that. that's cool. But, like, my friend who introduced this stuff to me, again, he, like, showed me some other genres. Dude, he, he showed me this one. It's called Haiku. Uh, have you heard of it? It's about volleyball. Uh, yeah, it's 575, five, right? Uh, I don't know what that is. Haiku is a form of poetry. No. <laughs> Going yes, yes, five yes, syllables, yes, seven yes, syllables, yes, yes, yes. So syllables. haiku is is five seven five syllables. No, the, the show is called Haiku. I've never and, seen it. Okay, and it's about volleyball. And Isaac, you you've met me in person. Do I look like a person who would uh you know like the game of volleyball? Playing it, no. playing it, watching it, enjoying it. I think this. I think you have enough of competitive spirit that I could with. One libation gets you to watch a whole entire game of volleyball with me. I, like, I don't even think I can jump, dude. <laughs> I didn't say play it. I said watch it. Yeah. I know you can't play it. Yeah. I can't play it. And I took a volleyball class in college. Oh, wow. And wow. I could not play it right now if I okay. wanted to. Yeah. No, so – um, no, I, I hate watching sports. But anyways, uh, <laughs> this show, it took all of the, like, anime tropes – uh, mm -hmm. that you see in these action animes and it was literally the same thing applied to this sports setting and it was a high school volleyball team you know they come from the bottom their team's really bad they get a couple new players they go on to nationals they like lose their first nationals thing blah 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 right and and it's it's the same i don't want to say it's the same storyline but it's a lot of the same tropes you see in all these shows but it's just applied to a different genre and mm -hmm. i was like this is very interesting and very yeah. cool so much to the point where I'm like, I kind of want to go buy a volleyball right now. <laughs> <laughs> and like, they almost got you. They almost got me. And like I just said, I think like you have seen me. Like I do not own a ball. Like I do not own a sports ball of, of <laughs> any type. I don't know where to buy a volleyball. <laughs> and the thought went through my brain. I did not buy one. They did not get me. But 
the thought went through my brain and I'm like, I kind of want to hit this ball over a net. That would be pretty cool. Uh, I, I, as somebody who has played it, one, you do not need to be in particularly amazing shape to play volleyball yeah. to like recreationally. Yeah. And two, all you could 100% hit it over a net the first okay, time. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so when you stop watching anime in high school, do you remember rough what the last like one or two shows you were like kind of into into? Oh, uh, if... Um, I remember watching Full Metal Alchemist, the, the, the um, original, the, the not real one, uh, the sh- original one. Yeah. 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 Um, the, the short for those of you yes. that aren't in the know that are anime fans, which is, this is the, I'm talking to two people at this point that aren't us and maybe just us. Full Metal Alchemist came out, I think in like the early 2000s, late nineties. It was a kind of. It was a good but bastardized, according to yeah. the original, you know, manga version. It goes on for like a season two, maybe, and then ends. And it ends very bizarrely. Yes, very different than the original writing. Well, just also just weird. Yeah, like yeah, as yeah. somebody that it, yeah. I went to school, I learned how to write stories. It yeah. ends in the most like uh, yeah. thing I've ever seen. Anyway, so that one happens, and then you know, decade and uh, decade or so later, they come out with one that's like five seasons and follows the manga yeah. pretty faithfully and yeah. a banger. Yeah. Anyway, so that one. Yeah. So yeah, it was the original one. I do remember that kind of being like the last one I watched go to high school, go to college. What's the first thing that gets you back? Or what are the first like couple that you like get that really like, you know, charge your cylinder? It was, it was this haiku one. And, mm-hmm. and, and like, you know, I know I was kind of joking about the whole volleyball thing, but I, I like actually thought if, if a show has the power <laughs> to get a person like me to want to buy a volleyball like this is a pretty cool it can show change the world i mean kind of like <laughs> it nearly did <laughs> it, it ryan sloan did. almost bought a volleyball professional volleyball player over here if that can happen anime can solve any conflict. yeah solve human human hunger you know world hunger yeah. you know, it, anime, it can do it all baby your cancer right, yeah uh, it can't make me taller though so <laughs> So so still actually that's that's the whole point the the, the main character is actually really short in the show and so yeah you know <laughs> I'm also pretty short. So. I mean like yeah it's it's not like Hunter x Hunter you can't just like magically grow for yeah. no reason because yeah, yeah, of yeah. Nen. Yeah. Yeah. Um so it, it was my my roommate at the time showed me that one. He showed me this Call You Summer Love is War one which is just like a, a sitcom romantic comedy slice of life whatever you want to call it. And um, again, the it was the most kind of... metal name I've heard in a minute. <laughs> Love is war. Oh, it's just a little yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the the one that the theme song that I that I mentioned called "Your mm. Lie in April" was is a oof. So I'm a I'm a softy um, when it comes to like emotional shows. If this is gonna make me sound kind of weird, but like if you enjoy like crying about a show or crying about mm. an ending, go go watch this show. Like this show will have a grown man in tears about, you know, it, it's a cartoon. It's a cartoon and it's making me cry. It is, it is Aww. one of the best shows. It's very good. That's sweet. Um, so it was, it was kind of like the, the um, jump to all these different genres that I'd never heard of that like kind of got me back into it. I'm like, wait, uh, anime is not just about like robots and, and fighting and samurais and swords. Not and that stuff. there's anything there's... wrong with that. Yeah, no. And those are, those are great. <laughs> um, it, there's all these other ones that are pretty cool too. So who who is your roommate that we need to give mad? Oh, it's, it's Hector. A... It's Hector. Hector Cortez. Props to Hector. Thank you, Hector Cortez. Cortez. Yes. You're a, you're a man of the cloth. Yes. Fine, good living. Yes. So what would you say is the biggest misconception about anime by the wider world? Yeah. So that's a huge one. It is huge. Um. It, it is the cultural differences in what an American views as like appropriate or normal compared to Japanese culture. And now before I go on my little soapbox about this, I am not Japanese. So I, I do not know what Japanese culture actually is like. This is just via, via being, a um, being, being a weeb, I guess, just from what I have observed from shows and like things like that, you know, I've never been to Japan. I'm not Japanese myself, but the, the view that they come from, it's a lot of the things that they would think are a little bit more normalized, we think are very weird. So a lot of like the sexual innuendos, a lot of the, uh, you know, like the age of consent in Japan is different than it is here in America. So that is like a huge barrier. And I think it just off puts a lot of people like instantly. Um, mm. And it's unfortunate because I have a friend, he, he tells me this story. He says, you know, I was in college. 
I walked in on a friend watching anime, and it was a giant octopus. And yeah, you know where this is going, and it was I doing do. things. And I will leave it at that because I would like to show this to my students. And he Hello, was, students. <laughs> and he was like, I will never watch anime again. And I'm like, dude, like anime is not that one show. That is like saying you walked in on a porn film and you never want to watch a live action movie again because anime is a, it's like a media or medium, media, eh, medium, medium. Yeah, I mean it's technically both. Yeah. But I, I, I think that. I, I see where you're going. I, let, let, let me help you with that yeah. uh, that analogy there. Sure. That's like that's like opening up the wrong comic book and swearing off of graphic novels. Sure. There we go. Yeah, exactly. So, like if you read the wrong part of a killing joke, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure that's the right one. It gets dark. Yeah. In a very like most, you know, Christian mothers would just burn every single one and forbid you from walking near a comic shop. But then there's plenty of ones that I could show you. Yeah. That are going, you know, like Death of Superman is just literature. Yeah. It's not like it's not even a comic book. And the people that say that are just morons. Yeah. Like there is truly transformative stuff out there that see, like that is by a lot of stupid people. I'm going to call them, you know, categorized as like four kids. when right. They're not. And they're wrong. Like yeah. it's like they're, you know, double down on being stupid by yeah. saying such foolish things. Yeah, so I would say it's a combination of that, and then also exactly what you're just saying. The you know, oh, it's a cartoon; it has to be for kids, right? Like, like yeah. no. Which I mean, of... so to to be fair, there there is an aspect of that that is correct. There oh, are to- you yeah. know, there are some that uh, like if you watch the way they write, like one of the things that I don't like about anime, and part of it is like the ones that it's really weird. I love the storyline. Mm-hmm. But then, like, one of my biggest gripes that I had with everybody's favorite show in Demon Slayer, mm-hmm. uh, one of them is a writing choice that I think is just bad. And the other one is that at the beginning of so many episodes, there's just, like, wrap-up and reminder of what happened. It's like, I was just watching it. Oh, yeah, yeah, And there's, yeah. like, they're giving me five minutes of, like, totally. oh, so this is what happened last time. It's like, and the reason that is, and, like, and is this is something more of, for me to get over than them to change is that it's because kids have short attention spans, yeah. like actual, yeah. like, you know, young teens or people that aren't even teens yet. You're like nine, 10, 11, their attention spans aren't that good. And they're right. not, they, they are under the impression. I assume they are correct because research has probably gone into this, that they don't remember what happened last time. Yeah. And they need a little bit of a catalyst to be like, Oh yeah, this is what just happened yeah. to get back in. So they don't get lost in the story. Yeah, totally agree. And, and in fact, um, Naruto is exactly like that. Um, and I I actually never really thought of the short attention span thing, but I kind of attribute it to, you know, Naruto was, it was serialized. So like a new episode came out every week, whereas, mm-hmm. you know, we have the power of Netflix, power of Crunchyroll, and we can, you know, binge watch a show in, you know, one sitting or, you know, two couple days. Yeah. Uh, I think when like Naruto was originally written, it was not meant to be binge watch. It was meant to, you know, oh. You didn't have the opportunity. Yeah, you, you couldn't, you know, <laughs> oh, Thursday is Naruto day or whatever. So you would watch yeah. your one episode. Hey, I kind of forgot what happened last episode or maybe I missed last last week. Pull out a bag of Funyuns, yeah. a Mountain Dew and just sit down and just eyes glued yeah. while you watch. Because right now when I'm watching it, I mean, we skip probably, you know, each episode's like 23 minutes. We probably skip. Seven, Six, eight minutes. Seven yeah. minutes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's a lot. It is. It is Go, a lot. Going back through, I remember again, brief aside because I can't help myself. Uh, watching my favorite, uh, one of my favorite, if not my favorite, uh, fight in the whole entire series is between Gar and Rockley. I think it's yeah. actually oh, yeah, just yeah, the yeah. best fight in fight in the series, and I will literally fight somebody if they disagree. Yeah, because I'm a child. Yes. Uh, and if you go back and watch, people have made edits of the fight. It's not that long. Yeah. It's pretty nice. It's got great back and forth tension, great storytelling in diegetic and non-diegetic forms because of like their fighting styles and the actions they take. It tells a really cool story and gives a lot more character development and depth. Mm-hmm. If you watch it in the anime, it's literally weeks of anime <laughs> yeah. that be, yeah. can be like consolidated down. Yeah, I, between... I think it's I think it's literally like five or six episodes. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I think it's north of that. More I that? think okay. it's probably, yeah. I think it's almost coming in at 10. Wow. Yeah. There's yeah. so much background information. They feel like they have to tell you yeah. that they like a lot of cutaway things, a lot of people talking and like, or, you know, thinking out loud, Yeah, which is just, I love about anime. Yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> something you could not do in Western, in Western media for at all. Yeah. Uh, but 
they do all that and then each episode they have to like take you back to what's been happening it's like yeah it's been the same thing for like a week now yeah. we get it but then like when you break it down like i think to this point at, at which point i can't really watch it in its original form anymore because it takes so damn long i just don't have that kind of time in my life to devote to like this little like you know basically junk eating binge equivalent of watching media yeah so now i actually will just go and i would implore anybody to do this watch it, who are anime fans or not is if you i think if you still go on youtube i'm gonna try this now to make sure um if you look between a rock and a it's a rock and a hard place um and like click nardo is that what it is yeah, it's between. It's called between a rock and a hard place. I think I'm gonna click on it now because I can't help myself. Yeah, if you if you Google or if you YouTube between a rock and a hard place, Nardo for the so you don't get something else, you will get. <laughs> it's effectively three and a half minutes is yeah. the actual fight. Yeah. And it's condensed down and it's mixed beautifully mm -hmm. to this awesome piece of techno that the the name of the song is real stupid. Um, it's something about like dolphins or some crap. I don't remember. It really is just like, wait, that's the name of the track, but it's a banger of a track and an awesomely edited music video that's been out. It says on here, and I, if this is the original upload, I'd even be surprised. The upload that's on here that you can find ha is 16 years old. Yeah. I, and I don't even think that's the original one. And it's just amazing. The yeah. the kinetic editing they do to like all the beats are like matching movements of the characters and it's fire. But the fight is three and a half minutes and then like the episode's like plus a week long. Yeah. So like yeah. Yeah, no, I'm I'm a huge fan of those uh AMVs, anime music oh, videos. Yeah. yeah. That was the that was the first one I ever actually saw. I think that might have been so in were you, did you ever watch Naruto before you poo pooed it? Or no. did you just like see a thing for it and were like, no, stupid? no, like ninjas are dumb, dude. He, yeah. He's yellow, dude. Why Little did you know they weren't actually ninjas. They're basically wizards. I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I'm like, first off, if ninjas are trying to be sneaky, why would he wear orange? I'm like, that is <laughs> yeah, it's dumb. Boring, dumb. Yeah. So, yeah. Everything about that show is like, it's so yeah, much no, it's, of the backdrop ninjas. of like ninjas. Yeah, they're not ninjas. They're basically warlocks. Like all, yeah. like Sans, Rock Lee, they all are just doing magic left, right, and yeah. center. The yeah. only person that isn't is basically like Ten -ten. Bruce Lee on roids. Yeah. Like it's, <laughs> which do Rock Lee, Bruce Lee. Huh? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, highly, highly recommend checking that out. So other than the, the misconception about the obvious... Anything else, uh, you know, and I don't mean to say the obvious, but it is it is so rampant. I totally know what you mean. Like, yeah, that everybody, especially like I feel like and I'm so proud of Gen Z and every generation moving forward because they seem to one the idea of yucking somebody's yum by and large has become less popularized. Yeah, and like definitely. the idea of like just yeah, just, and do what you enjoy. Yeah. You know, people make fun of you a little bit, but it's more in like lighthearted fun. Yeah. Because when we were growing up, not to be like back in my day, right. but seriously, back in my day, like if you watch that, you would get, I never got a swirly, but definitely right. like, right. you know, smacked, made fun of. I know people that got like thrown against lockers exactly, or like yeah. punched because they're just like, I like this thing. They're like, you're an idiot. And yeah. they, they would just assault you. Yeah. So thank you, newer generations, for you know figuring out that's stupid and not okay. Definitely. And um, one of the reasons I like think back and and I'm like, dang, I, I wish I you know that was one of my regrets is, is like you know caring so much what what people think is that my that roommate uh, Hector he would tell me when he watched Naruto in in high school he was like, dude, we would come to school every day, you know watch the new episode and we would like do the little shining gun thing with our fingers to like each other in the classroom Dope. and i'm like bro i do that now and i'm 30 <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like you know, I, I will say regardless of what you think of naruto the the hand biz yeah. is top tier yeah. that is one of the coolest things that has ever been that you could like do yeah i've i will never make fun of somebody who can do that like yeah with the quickness that it is animated that is like yeah. just it's just fire that yeah is so and, dope. and so i'm like dude i i, I wish i had peers at that age mm -hmm. who you know i could have shared this with but you know yeah didn't. you could just be like yourself and not yeah. just ridiculed and reviled yeah. you know yeah on the flip side of this do you have a favorite non-obvious aspect to anime something that people don't really realize or enjoy um or know about it even yeah so 
I I, I kind of mentioned, like, you know, if you like watching a show that makes you a little depressed. I, I don't know what this says about my personal psyche, but I actually really enjoy that, watching sad shows, which... I mean, I, I, I know where you're going yeah. with this. I think saying depressed is not wrong, but I think it can be more correct yeah. than saying it makes you feel things. Yeah, it does. And... And I, I quite haven't quite like put a finger on why I like these. I don't know if it's I can relate to the character, if it's you know something happened to you know this character's story that happened to me when I was a kid. I you know I can't quite put my finger on it, but I just really like these very emotional, deep, um, um, kind of more sad shows. Uh, uh, allow me to uh, unfurl yeah. my uh, film degree cape yeah. for you. It's the word. The word that's going to crack this open for you is juxtaposition. Sure, yeah. So one of the things that they can do, and as somebody who is, albeit slowly, trying to write a script for a live-action adaptation of Berserk, one of the things that you're able to do in the anime medium that you can do in very few... I don't even think you can do it in, like, many... You can do it in some, but not in a lot of, like, American animated features that you can do in Japanese other than have people, like, think their thoughts out loud, which is a very sneaky thing mm -hmm. that if they hadn't established early, I don't think would work now. Yes. But since it's just been a part of the medium for so long, you just get to have it, which matters because you can't have Death Note without people thinking oh, yeah. out loud. Yeah. Um, thanks to Netflix, you morons. Uh, but... The other thing that they're able to do is mix comedy and drama to the degree that they can. <laughs> yes, yes. Because you can have some of, like, for those of you, the uninitiated, uh, Berserk, which is one of my favorite uh, manga and anime of all time, preferably mostly the manga, but the anime also has had its moments. There was a, it is set in uh, feudal Europe, and it's, you know, about knights and monsters. It's awesome. It's as D and D as any anime has ever gotten, like Goblin Slayer owns owes everything it has to, to Berserk. There is a character in there that is this pixie. He is fifty percent comic relief. Without him, there's like most of the jokes just don't exist in the series. However, you also have some of the most diabolical, degenerate, gruesome crap that could ever be put to page, put to scene. That can exist, and yet they're in the same thing, and they never feel like they pull one from the other. And it's not you won't have them doing them in the same scene. They know their place in yeah. timing, but they're able to coexist in the same universe seamlessly. And there's no like you don't ever get whiplash from like dramatic scene to you know jokey fun time. Yeah, but and they're able to all inclusive. And I think that's one of the beauties of anime is you can have the serious with the silly. Yeah. And that, but that also makes the serious punch a lot harder I, when I, you're used to watching a kid who he's the butt of the joke because he eats food and he's really fat. And then in his kind of height of his arc, he dies for his friend because he's the only person he's ever had who cared about him. Yeah. It kills you. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely agree with Choji. that. Uh, <clears throat> yes, yes, yes. And, and he, he died eating too, right? Like, he, you know, or. Uh, right? no. He, he ate the red no. food pill. Well, okay, sure. <laughs> but he he di he dies looking he dies looking at a translucent <laughs> yeah, uh, no, butterfly yeah, yeah, remembering yeah, 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 the, yeah, yeah. the first time he met his yes, best friend. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, yeah. Uh, no, so so that point with the with the combination of serious and comedic relief, I 100% agree, and that is actually why I actually don't really like the show Attack on Titan. I know that's it's like, you know, very popular and, you know, I know it's a really good show, but there is, I would say, zero funny in that show. Which, There's one character. Yeah. Uh, and she likes yeah. to eat potatoes. Yes, yes Sasha. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> Without there, Sasha, the, the, right. joke, the show literally has zero And, and that is one of the reasons I, I don't like that show is because there's no, there's no funnies. There's no, um, there's no comedic relief. There's no, um, yeah. okay, help. Uh, I want to ask you this since you're the uh, film professional. Is there a name for that thing they do in anime where the animation, it, it, it changes it gets a it's like gets like super goofy you know like the characters can like get wiggly their faces change and it's like i mean it is meant to be the funny part but it's like the animation changes i don't know what it's called but it happens in like almost every show do you know what i'm um, talking about 
I know what you're talking about. I don't really know a word for it because it's it's so anime, right? Yeah, that that doesn't really happen. Yeah, I, the closest thing you would say to that is you're like mixing two art forms, like Who Framed Roger Rabbit, mm -hmm. where you're mixing two D and three D, but that's not the same yeah. thing. Yeah, but it, it's that kind of like juxtaposition dichotomy of images where it's just like such an imbalance yeah that yeah it kind of creates that silly but again like that i think that kind of feeds into what i was talking about with the w with having those two things happening and like again they because it's anime and they've just set it up because they just decided yeah that's what we're gonna do yeah like it just plays yeah it's it's become it's, why. it's part of the norm it's part of it's one yeah. of the anime tropes that yeah yeah and it is just it, it is so amazing it's one of those things that like you can do it a little bit in Western media. I want to say I've seen it a time or two, but it is, it, it's almost, it's so anime that when you see it in American media, it almost feels like an homage to anime. Yeah. What the, so one of the American cartoons I really like, obviously SpongeBob, um, the, the thing I, in SpongeBob, they'll have like that narrator come on and then it switches to like the text and it'll say like four hours later or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, that's like maybe a little bit or like the, my leg guy who's like my leg. Right. Um, so some of those <laughs> like where it switches and it changes um, like visually, that's mm -hmm. like the only thing I can think of in like a Western, um, you know, cartoon yeah. or show, but I don't know. Yeah. No, I think, I think it's a very, I think that's a very good uh, point, but yeah, I don't, I don't know the term for that one. Cause that is, that one's a little outside. Yeah. I only have a bachelor's, okay? Don't, <laughs> yeah. Not a master master. Don't put me on blast. Yeah. Uh, before we switch from your passion to your preposterous peeve, yeah. what uh, anime would you... If, if somebody comes up to you and goes, what anime would you recommend? What Do you have a, a list... You know, yeah. would it depend upon like what the person likes? Yeah. So, so I, I have this, you know, huge discussion with my <laughs> friends about this. Um, um, I have a list depending on the genre, because it's like asking someone their favorite song. Like, dude, yep. I, I don't know. Like, I can tell you what kind of music do you yeah, like? I yeah, I can tell you so a favorite variables. song per genre, maybe. So right. I, I kind of have so, that list. So, so run it down. We got. All right, I, I'm in for comedy or one anime. What should I watch? Okay, so comedy would be. Um, uh, probably Love Is War. That also hits uh, hits comedy, romantic comedy. Uh, okay. Uh, I yeah. want I want like uh you know action things go boom. So if it's a beginner and they're a little bit younger, maybe Gen <laughs> Z. I'm sorry, but I am gonna say Demon Slayer or My Hero because oh, yeah, those two shows are the most popular, and that is what those are the two shows that are taking anime to become mainstream. And you know, I'm not gonna be the person like, oh, I liked anime like before it was cool, but like I am happy that those shows. Like I am happy that those shows are mainstream, and I'm happy that you see those, you know, T-shirts at Target and Hot Topic and whatever, because that is yeah. what's going to get, you know, Japanese cartoons, anime to the forefront of, yeah. of uh, you know, just shows. keep just keep them, you know, money. <laughs> they are businesses; they do yeah. need money. Yeah, yeah. So those are two very good action ones. All right, uh, high drama. High drama. Um, there is one called Fruits Basket. Uh, ha yeah. Have you heard of this? Yeah, I, I've heard of it. I don't know anything about it, but it is so it is such a mainstay of like yeah anime conversation that I've heard that name for yeah, years. Yeah, it's now. really good. Um, a lot of character development. It it is it mixes the like fantasy. So the characters turn into these um, Chinese zodiac animals that they are associated with. But it is also just a regular show about these teenagers going to high school and and they have to deal with this thing about how they turn into a rabbit every time because they're a zodiac thing. So it like it mixes this very weird aspect like, hey, why are they turning into animals all this time? But then as you watch the show, it's like, oh, it's kind of just like a normal thing now. Now we're just getting into the drama of the show. So that one's pretty good. Um, period pieces are really big in American media. Is there any period pieces for like a? anime sorry i don't i'm not familiar with that term period piece yeah so think of like bridgerton or uh what was the one that was set in britain uh downton downton abbey um would this be like historical drama kind of like taking yeah, place it's, in it's, a time yeah, period? historical drama yeah it's, it takes place in a certain period okay yeah so um yeah so there's a 
pretty good one. It actually just stopped airing the second season, I believe. It's called Spy Family. I'm sure you maybe you've heard of it. It's a pretty popular one. Okay, that that does not count. <laughs> what? It takes place in in West. It's it's in Berlin, dude. The, it's like the crux of it has nothing. All right, whatever. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll allow it. I love the show <laughs> enough. I'll allow it. But that. Mm. Okay, historical. You know, I I I could not uh, give uh, a good recommendation for. No, for, I'll yeah. allow it. It's that, that's. <laughs> I'll allow it. Sure. <laughs> There's got to be one that has to do with, like, that, you know, has to do with, like, Japanese culture, like, you know. Okay, so, or... so actually, Roroni Kenshin is actually a pretty... I was going to say, like, Roroni Yeah, Kenshin, that like... one, I mean, it does, it talks about, you know, the end of the, oh my gosh, I forget the era names, is it Meiji era? Uh, you know, when, you know, samurais were the warriors, and then the Industrial Revolution happened in Japan, where they, you know, had guns and, and they military, banned swords, and they banned swords. Yeah. So it does have the historical piece, you know, obviously he has his, like kind of superhuman sword skills and whatever, but um, it, it does kind of go through that history. You know, I, I think it's the same historical period as the movie um, uh, Tom Cruise. The Last Samurai. Yeah, Last Samurai. I believe it's the same time period. Y- yeah, it's a... It, Last Samurai is at the tail end of it. Rory Kenshin's kind of like in the middle. Yeah. Because when he starts out, it's... If I remember correctly, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. It starts out and he's like... It's very much swords are st- the kind of the thing and it like kind of starts... It's at the beginning yeah. of when he edges out. Yeah, it's like the, it's like swords are newly banned and like, huh, that yeah. is a weird thing. Yeah. So what would you say is the... Uh, are you familiar with the term art house? No. No. Uh, so like A24, uh, you know, very like trying to like really play with storytelling and images, like getting really creative and really weird. Okay. Is there any of those that? Yeah. The, um, the, oh my goodness. Uh, the studio Ghibli ones. Um, okay. Dude, what's the dude's name? Kao Miyazaki. You're losing. You're losing. <laughs> okay, can you please cut that out? Cause second. I feel really dumb for not remembering Miyazaki's name. Okay. But yes. Yeah. So the Miyazaki films, don't um, cut that out, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Mizaki Films. There's another. He's he's a little bit more modern. He does. Um, he does. Oh my. Makoto Shinkai. Yes. Yeah. So. Makoto um, Shinkai. Sorry. What was the um, name of that genre? What did you call it? Art house. Yeah. So these two. One is called Your Name, and then the other one's called Weathering with You. Um, they're very. The art is very surreal. It's very. Um, you know, I think it was Weathering With You takes place in the city of Tokyo, so you see these, like, awesome skyscapes, and then, you know, the rain has to do with it, and and just, just really cool um, imagery and, and drawing, and then also just very cool, like, fantasy um, aspects mixed in with just, like, this regular kid meeting this girl in the city, whatever. Um, so there's a third one. I can't remember the... Oh, it's called Bubble. Yeah, so Weathering With You, Bubble, Your Name. Those are all... They're all... Um, written by the same person they're really good right on all right just for my own nerdy curiosities cowboy bebop where, where you yeah stand. no it's it's fine i, I watched it um Ugh, it's, it's fine okay <laughs> pardon me Jeez. no okay all right so here's my thing with like the 90s anime it's like yeah they're, they're great like i've like neon genesis league is great uh bebop yeah. is great um i actually haven't watched akira um those ones are good. Uh, students that are listening to us in the classroom, you need to revolt and start throwing <laughs> things at your teacher. I I haven't seen Akira. Who are you? <laughs> weeb card revoked. Yeah, I'm a wannabe weeb, dude. I'm a new age weeb, I guess. Um, Get your shit together. Put it in a backpack. Yeah. Um. No, they're they're good. I just I don't want to say they're dated. They're just they're just different than than the shows are are now. Um can't there. really put a finger on the animation what, style for the starters. animation style is is different um i don't know I, I i can't really explain why but um i mean i really like neon yeah. genesis you know the, the whole point of this to is you know to get back to why you took the hate is we're not here to yuck anybody yeah. yum, although yeah, yeah. you are wrong yeah but you know we're not here to yuck anybody's yum. <laughs> <laughs> all right before i get too peeved let's let's figure out what uh drives you mad Okay. My so, friend, what is your preposterous peeve? Okay, so I know a pet peeve is kind of supposed to be like a silly, lighthearted thing, but I, I'm sorry. Well, I these, are, these aren't pet peeves. These are preposterous peeves. Okay, and and this is pretty preposterous, but I do have a story behind it. I do have kind of a, a deeper, more serious note. So my pet peeve is you're having a really bad day. You walk to the grocery store, and you buy your whatever you're buying. 
you go up to the cashier, the cash register person, and they say, hey, how are you doing? And it is like a social contract that you have to yep. say, oh, I'm doing fine. Because if you were to say, oh, I'm doing bad, then that person is going to look at you and be like, oh, well, he's, you know, he's just being negative or, you know, what an asshole, yeah. what, whatever, right? It's like you are almost, or I at least feel like you are forced to say you are doing good. And, yeah. um, you know, I have struggled with mental health uh, issues in the past and, and current. And there are some days where it is very hard for me to say that I'm doing good, doing well mm -hmm. um, to a complete stranger when I, you know, don't want to say that because I feel like I'm lying to myself. So yeah. that is it's one of stupid, my pet peeves. It's a stupid social contract. It is. Sure. It is. Yeah. I, I really don't like that. Um, it, it really bugs me. And, um, you know, if I were to, you know, tell someone like, oh, I, I think it's dumb that you said you had a good day when you don't have a good day. Like, yeah, that's kind of preposterous. Like, come on, dude. You're just making small, small talk. Like, just, just say yeah. you had a good day. But, you know, that's my thing. Not really a... Bugs no, me. I mean, like, it, it is one of those things that is, like, maddening when – because it's something that, depending upon what time frame and what part of the society you're in, that's something that you do need to talk about, like yeah. you're saying, mental health. But it's under this guise where you can't, and if you do, you're the jerk, yeah. even though you're being yeah. asked this question, right. which can be asked sincerely. They'll, like, have a great day, oh, you two. That's, you know, one – that's actually just beneficial to all parties to, to actually, there is like a lot of science behind yeah. positivity mm -hmm. being like reverberated in the public discourse. Like yeah. as much as people like to make fun of us looking at a lot of people discussing the, the one of my favorite things to do is go on Reddit and look at ask Reddit and just kind of get, gather as much aggregate, you know, firsthand information from strangers. And one of the really fun ones is when people talk about what makes America great, not trying to get on some yeah, silly yeah. political kick or anything like that. But there is all this negative kind of attributes yeah. about us globally. But to see the positive, mm -hmm. especially from people around the globe. And one of the things that I saw in droves to the response of that question of what, you know, what does America excel at? And it's positivity. And it's because when you go out in this country and you go, have a nice day. They go, oh, you too. And there's so much, you know, how are you doing? And yeah. the idea behind the how are you doing today is to be positive. Right. However, I think it very much needs to be retooled because it's a question that you need to be able to answer yeah. to get stuff off your metaphorical plate. Yeah. And like you're saying, you can't do that. Otherwise, you're the jerk, which is ridiculous. Yeah. When did you first notice this just riling up your ire? Yeah, no, so I actually, I had a, a pretty large, um, you know, pretty significant mental health uh, uh, kind of like hurdle, I would say in, it was 2017, 18, when I still lived in San Luis, it was like my first two years of teaching, um, where I, you know, I was, I was, you know, clinically depressed, I, I had to take time off of work, and those kids kept biting my ankles, it's the yeah, worst. you know, yeah, um, and I, I literally remember sitting in a car, and I was sitting outside a parking lot of a Ralph's because I needed to go buy food or, you know, whatever it was. And I, two things happened. I remember my mom called me and she's like, Hey, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm sitting in a parking lot, mom. And she's like, what, like, what, like, what'd you do? And I'm like, I just came back from Costco and I bought a weighted blanket. And I don't know if you're aware of the whole like weighted blanket, like craze thing that kind of happened. Like maybe what? Three. Still, I'm looking at mine right now. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and I literally started bawling, crying, because yeah. here I am going through this episode trying to buy a like physical product that would like uh -huh. cure my mental health thing. And and I, I love my weighted blanket, but I'm just saying, you know, at yeah, the time yeah. I, it was almost it, like a it definitely was billed as like a panacea for problems. Yes, it but was, it's it was, like it's just a blanket that helps you sleep. Yeah, it was better. it was almost like a like a like a last ditch effort to like cure myself of this thing, whatever. Uh -huh. And then so I did that, and then and then I remember uh, walking to the Ralphs to get my food. And, you know, the cash register person says this exact same thing. And, and I, like, literally start, like, tearing in front of the cash register person. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck, dude. Like, I look, like, dude, like, like are they going to call a cops on me? Like, are, are, 
Like, are they really? gonna call? Like, are they gonna call the cops yeah. on me? Like, like, what do I say? Like, do I just yeah. ignore them? Do I do I say bad day? Do I say medium day? Like, like I I didn't know what to do. I like freaked out. Like, like yeah. So yeah. so you're yeah. like if I say if I say what was on my mind, does a cop come up because I right. didn't say the right password? Right. You know, yeah, is exactly. this how they find the terrorists among us? Is they yeah. <laughs> like that's what? <laughs> how amazing would that be though? Yeah. If that's the reason everybody asked that is because they know non-americans will go lying act yeah act, actually i'm having a pretty mediocre day they're like get out of the ground right, you're like, right. you oh, must no, be happy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're not an american you didn't say i'm fine how are you yeah yeah <laughs> uh but yeah no i i specifically remember the the one instance and then ever since then i mean i've talked to my therapist about it i'm like you know am i socially obligated to say this to this person like it, it became a pretty big deal for, for me actually um but but yeah i remember the, the first time that happened yeah the awkward thing is you can't if you also if you just kind to answer you're a dick right right no like the, you can't be like yeah. oh no thank you like right exactly. that, like that you're just like the person goes oh and you're just like look i just don't want to answer the question yeah. either way because i'm either being insincere and then i feel bad because you know my social like conscience doesn't feel good or i you know answer politely and correctly and then I feel bad because I'm not expressing myself and I feel like I'm lying to the world. Like you can't, like there's no it's way no, to escape the, what, lose, that. Lose, lose. Yeah. I, I had this exact the, conversation, honestly, with my therapist. Cause I'm like, you know, if, if I, if I lie and say, yeah, good day, I feel terrible. If I even yeah. like lie and say like, oh, I'm okay. Cause I was not okay at that time. So like, yeah. even that was like lying for, for myself. And then, yeah, if you, if you just walk by, they're going to, call the cops and think you're crazy or something so yeah exactly <laughs> so yeah if you just ghost them you're just like, <laughs> just like... <laughs> yeah. what is your how have you have you figured out the, the yeah, secret to life yeah. and like um my kind of go to, to you know when i am having a bad day and i don't feel like lying because i don't feel like lying i i do say um i'll say like okay day or i i kind of use the medium i mean I, it kind of is a cop out but it, it's I feel it's the le- it's still appropriate. They're not going to think you're a weirdo. Um, and then I, I feel a little bit better about saying it. Um, I'm trying to think of the exact wording I said when I was like really doing poorly what I would say. Um, I can't really think of it right now. Uh, the, 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 kind of, the kind of fun one that a friend of mine ha- has done is just like, air still tastes the same. Or like yeah. he comes up with this like non sequitur yeah. that will just like, because most of the people, as somebody who has worked in, you know, public service like that, or, you know, like the, the service profession, you, you are just effectively, like, announcing a script. Like, if you... Right, I know, and that's like, the other I, thing. As that, as that person, not only, like, they don't mean any harm, and we, we're exactly. not, I, neither exactly. of us are saying that, but, like, they're they're following the script, which makes it terrible at the same time. Yeah. But the, the thing is, the really fun one is when you say, like, when you flip it on them, that they'll tell you to, like... It'll be like, uh, you know, if you're like, if you could occasionally you could find a server where they're like just going through the motions and so it'll be like, you could get them to say like, uh, oh, I'm trying to figure out how, how the rigmarole goes, but you could have them just like say something that you would have said to them basically, or like that they would have said to you. You can like kind of end up like putting a, a weird loop at the end of the script where they'll end up where they'll end up answering as if they were the customer like they'll follow the beats of the customer because yeah. they're so just so like, like robotic it's yeah so yeah so just like fill out program yeah but like when you hit them with a non sequitur a lot of people are like eh, what? and then you just like keep walking like you keep doing whatever you're doing and they're just like befuddled and you don't have to like figure out the rest of the script and then the next person comes forward and th- whoever's at the thing goes oh yeah a rip and just like starts down the script again and so you haven't hurt them you've made their day a little bit more interesting and novel and you've gotten outside of the <laughs> like the program jargon that you had to like assimilate through to like you know escape the conversation yeah the um the common one and i mean this is like what my therapist told me to say is like the the you say like oh it is a day they're like how's your day like oh it's a day which is true <laughs> It's a day. It's a day. Yeah. Um, one of the ones I think this is hilarious is – so I never actually would say this to people. I would think it is I would – they would say, like, how are you doing? And I would say, oh, I'm medium. And yeah. more – it's just because, like, it's a funny way of describing something, right? It's like, oh, it's like you're oh, yeah. medium. You're in the, the middle of something. The thing is these damn Gen Zers – I don't know if you're up to date on the Gen Z language, but they all say mid now. 
like like yep. something is mid like that like that like i don't know if it means cool or not cool or, or mid like it, what it actually means but i'm like you guys stole my medium thing because <laughs> i came up with that so ugh. you red yeah <laughs> All right, with that charming little shout down from the top of Age Mountain, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna head to our second ad break. But don't go anywhere because when we get back, Ryan is gonna enter the lightning round. Hey you, yes you, yes I'm I'm talking to you. Have you ever wanted to record audio, or perhaps fiddle with recorded audio? Maybe even record audio of a fiddle and then fiddle with said audio. Well, now you can with Aw, Da, City? With all the run of the mill bells and whistles, you'll be confusing yourself with the tech in no time. But won't that cost lots of money? Because with my snow blowing habit, I can only afford it. It ain't gonna cost shit. Aw, Da, City? Is free and easy enough to use that even a snow blowing son of a gun can use it too. And we're back. Ryan, are you ready to enter? The Lightning Round? I am, yes. Let's go. All right. Put however much time it takes to bake this cookie on the clock. Ryan, is there a price for you to give up your passion? Forever. No. Happiness, no. Uh, money, 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 and happiness are not the same thing. So no, no price. Make the food or do the dishes. <laughs> Make the food. I hate dishes. Did you ever cheat on a test in school? Oh, of course. <laughs> you hear that, kids? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't tell my principal. Are you out of touch, or is it the children who are wrong? It's it's both. It, it could be half and half. Sorry, I got to go in the middle on that one. <laughs> Cop out. Would you rather have your inner monologue sound like Gilbert Gottfried or Fran Drescher? I'm going to be honest, don't know who either of those people are. Apologize. Wow. Would you rather read the cue cards while wearing the crown or live in a hovel and speak your mind? Speak my mind. Pineapple on pizza or fist fight? Fist fight. Is professional wrestling cool or lame? Um, I don't really like watching violent stuff even if it's like kind of fake wwe stuff so lame stub your toe or make small talk with strangers i'll stub my toe i'll stub my toe any day to not talk to strangers you're having the best day of your life what happens next another amazing thing or something terrible um something terrible i'm not that lucky i can't you know (laughs) nick cage best or worst ever oh best i i watch national treasure in in middle school over and over again best happiness or glory happiness do you create your own thoughts or just listen to them (laughs) oh i didn't know this was gonna be a therapy session um i listen to them would you rather meet your mortal demise by vicious werewolf attack or single zombie bite uh zombie bite wrong are soups smoothies no. Smoothies have fruit in them. Huh. Bears, Beats, or Battlestar Galactica? Bears. I watched a couple of Battlestar episodes. Not a fan. Sorry. <laughs> no Country for Old Men or Kill Bill? Uh, no Country for Old Men, definitely. Spend the holidays with your in-laws or work a double shift at your least favorite job ever? Um... I would say holidays with the the fam bam that you don't get along with. Acapella or instrumental? Instrumental. I love instrumental. Um, explosions in the sky. Shout out there. Cheese fries. An abomination or gift from God? Cheese fries. Gift from God. Do you believe in love at first sight? No. You go to the doctor tomorrow. He lets you know you you have a curable disease. However, the medicine he's going to give you, there are two options. If you take too little of it, you die. Or if you take it not at the same time every single day, you die. Which would you rather? 
Wait, so it's it's would I rather take it at the same time or take the right amount? Is that what you're asking? You have to take the exact right amount or you die. Or you have to take it at the exact same minute every day or you die. Uh the exact same amount. I would forget the the time one and then I would die. Like on the first day. Second day. Could you eat thirty seven of your favorite food for five thousand dollars in a one hour time limit? Yes. Easy. Well, congratulations. You've survived the lightning round. Thank you. Awesome. Ba, ba, da, ba. But before we move on to your prize, I, like many listeners at home, would like to now know, what is your favorite food? Um, <sighs> Korean short ribs. Oh, yeah. 37 of those is a breeze. Yeah. Oh, easy, dude. Easy. Easy mode. All right, man. Now that you have survived said eponymous lightning round what lightning round question would you like to ask me and in turn be asked of future guests okay so i'm going with the little deeper philosophical things here this also might have been said by an anime character might be my favorite one from naruto starts with an i also ends with an i um are truth and reality the same thing (laughs) now i've only taken one philosophy class in college i mean I've taken the same philosophy class twice. Does that count? <laughs> um, are truth and reality the same thing? My my gut says no, but my head says yes. Yeah, yeah. It's a tough one. Can I give my explanation? Yeah, go for it. Hit, hit me. So my explanation, again, I've taken one of philosophy class in college, so... I'm not, you know, super well versed in the uh, matters that are philosophy, but in my interpretation is, oh, let's see here. Reality is your perception, so it is it is mm-hmm. biased, it is skewed towards uh, your experiences, whereas truth is what is happening. It is it is the objective truth. So my example yeah. is you have two children. One grows up in, um, you know, lower socioeconomic, you know, upbringing. The other one grows up in a mansion and has a private, uh, you know, driver take him to work. One of those students or one of those children's reality is going to be different than the other one, right? So, like, the the student in the poor family might think, like, oh, like, my reality is that food is hard to get because mm-hmm. he doesn't always have food on the table. Whereas the other kid's reality, like, no, food, like, you just always have food, right? Like, why would you even think that? As they get older, the truth comes out that, you know, some people – are raised this way. Some people are raised this way. Some people have access to this. Some people don't have access to this. And the truth is that neither of those realities are correct. They're just, mm-hmm. they just both happen to different So things. I don't know if this one's going to work as well, but you just reminded me of this and I feel like it does apply. Okay. Let me know if I'm wrong, but my dad had this great way of showing the difference between um, if you are, like uh, the the difference between a, a cynic and a uh, optimist mm-hmm. is you take i think that's maybe maybe cynic isn't the right word but the, an optimist and the opposite <clears throat> you take two kids you put the optimist and you, you take the optimistic kid and you put them in like i, I think this is supposed to have happened or it's told as a tale Mm -hmm. so uh they they take these two kids to like some science experimenty place and they put this the optimistic kid in this room full of shit and they just like set him there it's like it's like it's not like literally just like you know he's not like neck deep in shit there's just a pile there's a huge pile Mm -hmm. of shit in the corner and they put him in there and then they take this other kid and they put him in a room full of toys brand new haven't been opened and they you know wait an hour and they come back and they come to the non-optimistic kid's room, and he's sitting there just looking at all the toys, crying. And they go, what's wrong? He goes, I just know I'm going to break one. And he's just like, he can't. The idea of playing with the toys is just so forlorn because he's too worried mm-hmm. about the likelihood that he's probably, you know, he's a kid. He's probably going to break the toy. And mm-hmm. he does, like that idea to him is so unappealing. And then they go to the next room, and there's just shit flying everywhere. And then they, <laughs> they open the door like, what is going on? He goes, this much crap there's got to be a pony in here somewhere <laughs> it's just that idea of just the way you perceive reality yeah. influences the way yeah. you experience it yeah but yeah so for one of them the the reality is there's probably a pony in that room and the other one the reality is you know, that he's probably gonna break something yeah yeah thanks it yeah all right on that tasteful little nugget 
as we come to a close, is there anything you want to plug, shout-outs you'd like to give, places people can find you or your content? You know, I'm not much of a social media guy. I mean, I have my own Facebook, but, you know, I don't I don't really, you know, make any content myself or anything like that. So so no plugs on the internet there. Um, you know, shout-out, maybe a uh, shout-out to Hector, who got me back into anime. Thank you there. Good, good uh, Chadley Hector. Yeah, uh, you know, shout-out to my family for supporting me in uh, some difficult times. Shout-out. And then uh, shout out to my students who actually made it to the end of this, what, hour and a half, uh, two hour long podcast, Mm. because I know they probably turned it off halfway through. (laughs) (laughs) So for those of you that made it, congrats. Yeah. Uh, Any uh, any recommendations as far as it goes for anime that people should be checking out that they're maybe sleeping on or that's coming out in the. Uh, so, so again, I I would say it's it's one of my favorites. Your Light in April. It's very wholesome. It's it's a very good tale. Um, it's two students in middle school. It's 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 like a love story. Yeah, but then, not set in high school. What was that? Not set in high not school. Not set in high school. Yeah, so they're a little <laughs> bit younger. It's also um it's it's music related. So they play classical music, which is really cool because I was really into that when I was younger. Um, but it's a really good tale. It it does have a sad ending, but it's it's great. The artwork is amazing. The opening theme song, which is the same song that uh, that I plugged earlier, um, I definitely recommend to check out that theme song because the the artwork's amazing in it. All right, man. Thanks for coming on. All right, thanks, Isaac. Well, thank you, Ryan, for being my guest today, and a special thanks to my editor Richard Ashford and my composer Joshua Gibbons. And thank you. Yes, you listening at home or have you found time to appreciate this. Time is the most precious commodity we have, and I appreciate you spending yours with us. And if you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe, like, or just share it with a friend. Every little bit helps. Or if you already have and are out of episodes to listen to, don't worry. We put out a new episode every Monday at midnight on SoundCloud, YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes at Passionate People and Preposterous Peeps Podcast. And a very special thanks are due to our patrons, Sibeli Yello. If you'd like to join said illustrious ranks and have your name read aloud, just send over to patreon.com backslash passionate people and Preposterous Peeves podcast. And remember, folks, if days are numbered and songs are sung, at the end of the day, I think we've all won. So please stick around, because great things have only just begun. <laughs>